It's not officially a takeover target yet, but this week's decision by Tabcorp to split its casinos from its wagering and gaming business has certainly shortened the odds of something happening. I spoke to Tabcorp chief Elmer Funker Cooper about why he wants to break up the gambling conglomerate. Well, Elmer Funker Cooper, um, what about you? What are you going to do? Are you, are you going to go with either of these two companies or go do something else? I, I will go do something else. Uh, I haven't decided what yet. Um, uh, we've put two very strong division heads in place with these businesses and, and they will take the business forward. And they'll become CEOs of listed companies, I guess? Yeah, so uh, Larry Mullen will become the CEO of the casinos business uh, and David Attenborough will become the CEO of Tapcorp Holdings post the merger. So do you think you'll go back into banking? That's where you came from to take this job. Uh, well, I spent 11 years in banking. Um, by the time this is in about four years at Tapcorp, I, I never say never. Uh, but it's really not for now. We've got, uh, we've got a business to run and a demerger to complete for the next eight months. That's, that's where I'm focusing. So on the um, demerger, I mean, obviously this has been discussed uh, widely and possibly in the board of, uh, of Tapcorp for quite a while now. Why, why did you choose to do it now? Well, we think the timing is right. Uh, and I think the reaction so far this week has been uh, suggesting that that was you know, the correct call to make. So what about the timing? Is it external or internal? Uh, well, it's internal. Uh, so we spent quite some time uh, very deliberately going through the steps uh, to make this decision. Uh, and what makes it possible is a couple of things. One is the performance of our businesses. So each of our businesses is now you know, performing uh, as well as they can in the current market environment. That's very important. Uh, and secondly, we've got strong investment strategies in place for each of the businesses. Uh, but we're recognizing that those strategies are different now. Uh, and I think it's time to put in place the right capital structures and the right funding structures and the right focus for each of those two businesses. But is it also driven by the need to now spend a lot of money on, um, on upgrading the casinos? There's a big capex well, demand that, on them. That's correct. I mean, that's a very positive program that we have. And, and you'll see in our, you've seen in our trading update, the casinos revenues are up 7%, uh, up 8% at Star alone. So that investment strategy is working for us, but that will be a continuous program of increasing investment. Uh, and, and that needs to be funded and managed separately from what is much more value-based investment in wagering and gaming. And so rather than try to hang on to a conglomerate structure in which you have two of those investment propositions, it's better to separate them and give investors choice. Because a lot of people uh, come up with exactly the opposite point of view on something like that, where when you need to fund, you have a you know, high capital demand part of your business and you have different cycles, it's much better to be a part of a conglomerate so that things are happening at different times and the capital requirements of one part of the business can be supplied by the other part. Uh, well, we've had that period, of course, during the global financial crisis. Um, we kept investing in our casinos business using some of the cash flows from from wagering and gaming in particular, which is a business that, that will have until 2012. Uh, through the capital raising that we've conducted this week uh, and over the next couple of weeks, we put in place the right capital structures for the two businesses. And the casinos company can afford to run slightly higher gearing and, in fact, will not be a rated company initially, initially where StepCorp Holdings will continue to be conservatively geared and investment grade. Uh, and we felt it was the right time to create clarity on those structures. And I think so far the response has been positive. Because all the analysts that I've read in the last few days um, have left their profit forecasts basically the same. They say, they've said that the demerger doesn't actually create any value of its own. It's all about gift wrapping the casino business and the wagering and gaming business for Crown to buy the casinos and for Tats to buy the, uh, buy the other business. So is that, I mean, how much a part of that is... Because the shares have gone up hmm. because of the corporate activity uh, uh, premium? Well, we don't look at it that way. Uh, we look at uh, the decision to demerge as the right decision in its own right. Uh, and I think the evidence is there that that's been the right call to make so far. Uh, it is fair to say that the two companies separate will have greater degrees of strategic freedom than we have in a conglomerate structure today. That's not been the driver of the decision. Uh, but of course, once they are set up as separate businesses in eight or nine months' time, uh, they can find their own path. And whatever that path is, on their own or with others, that's up to those businesses. Uh, what we're saying today is let's give them the freedom to find their own path. They've got very strong management uh, and strategies in place, and then the world will be the world and the market will determine what happens next. But have you ever, ever had any investment bankers come along and say, listen, you know, we've got a buyer for the casino business or the other business. Uh, if only it would separate them. 
you know, there'll be a takeover for sure. We don't comment on any speculation that might have, might have been in the past. We've made a very positive decision uh, to separate the businesses. Um, and uh, investment bankers are after that free to do whatever they do best. Uh, that's not up to me. Um, and it hasn't been driving a decision. But you can see, I mean, do you concede that that's a big part of the reason the share price has gone up in the last few days, that, that uh, there's the, it's the premium for a, for a possible takeover? Um, listen, I read the media just like, just like everybody else. Um, that hasn't been driving the decision. Uh, it's good for shareholders that the share price is up. Uh, we're delighted with that. Uh, and I think it's recognizing uh, the value that is in each of these businesses separately more so than the group. Um, I'd like to think that that's driven by that value rather than the speculation of what happens next, but that's up to the market. At the moment, Tabcorp is, I think, about 60-40 between, in terms of revenue between the wagering and gaming business and the casino business. Do you think that that will change over time as separate companies? Do you think it will eventually become 60-40 the other way, perhaps? Well, it was always going to be more weighted towards casinos over time. As in terms get, of growth? In terms of growth, investment and capital. And in fact, it's been a deliberate strategy for us to weight our investment towards the casinos, uh, which need the investment. They've got very long-term licenses and they've got a higher growth profile. I think what your question is pointing at is that that weighting will start to affect the group and we've now reached a point where it's better to recognize that difference and set them free. Do you think it will also affect um, the market rating, the, uh, the price earnings ratio of the business? It's noticeable that Tabcorp's PE is quite a bit lower than most casino businesses around the world. Do you think that's because it's weighed down by the other businesses? Well, I think you know, pure plays, particularly of a substantial size, which both of these businesses will be, tend to trade at higher multiples, particularly if they're performing well. And uh, I think some of that is coming through. Thanks very much for joining us, Elmer Funke-Cooper. Pleasure.